A blob, a blob, a blob, a blob. Oh no, what's that mean? We're gonna get back into those two hives that we set up on the granite slab. A package of bees and a five frame nuke side by side. We're gonna do a comparison and see after a couple of weeks how the two compare. We've got this, a Starlink internet update, coffee time, and a whole bunch more. And it all begins right now. Now, what I want to teach you about queen cups. You see the two queen cups right here? Into my thumb. What's up? I'm David Burns. Thanks for being here with me today. An exciting video, a little bit longer than normal. A lot of good educational stuff on beekeeping. We're going to jump right into a couple of hives. Side by side on that piece of heavy granite that I moved, we have a package of bees and a five frame nucleus that we started at the exact same time. Been a little bit over two weeks now. We want to jump in there and answer the question, which is better to start with? Which, which kind of goes faster than the other one? Is it the nuke? Is it the package? And we'll jump right in there and kind of check, see what's going on, what we need to do next. Some of you are following along these hives with me. That's a way for you to make sure you're doing what you need to do with your bees. So that'd be fun. Also, we're going to give you a Starlink update. That's going to be great. And we're going to get into coffee time after we get through the beekeeping information. Coffee time today is all about you feeling that you are good enough. That's a real struggle. Some people feel like, I'm just not good enough. I'm going to help you understand how to be good enough. All this is going to start right now as we jump into these two hives. And let's get busy. Let's start our smoker. Put our hat and veil on. Get a good drink of water because it's kind of hot. Let's get rolling. Where I put these two hives, right next to the old chicken coop, wow. Carpenter bees are really thick here. And as I've noticed, the carpenter bees really don't like the bees being here. The bees don't really care. They're just kind of ignoring the carpenter bees. You just saw a few go by. Look at that one right there looking at us. No doubt out of focus, I'm sure. That's what we're dealing with here. Okay, the first thing we'll do is smoke the entrance really good. Uh, this will kind of calm down any guard bees there are here. And remember, this hive has a feeder on it. So let's see how the bees have been eating the sugar water. So as you can see, they've been doing quite well. They've got it all the way down, nearly to the bottom. So they've eaten uh, well over uh, a full quart, maybe another half of the other quart. So they've been eating pretty well. Let me show you. So that's good. Got a lot of uh, protein in this with the uh, pollen powder. It also has the Honey Bee Healthy, I mean, Bee Booster, so it's, it's good. A lot of you asked me about the actual holes here, and we actually punch the holes in these lids. And in this case, uh, you can see we make very small holes, and I think about six. And we're gonna check on this package to see how they've been doing after a little over a couple of weeks. So this is my Burns feeder system that I use, so the bees are below the screen when you wanna actually change the jars out you don't have to worry about the bees uh, coming up out and stinging you I like to smoke a little bit underneath the feeder before I lift it entirely up you can see there's bees on the feeder here on the bottom of it I always check to make sure the Queen's not here they've been building a little stray comb at the top here, which is pretty common. Let's set this aside, leave the bees on it for now. I'm surprised how spread out the bees are. And what I mean by that, I've got a lot of bees here on this frame against the wall. I've got two new frames here, maybe a third one. 
and it seems to be a gap between where these bees are and not so many bees on these two frames and bees on the outside frame. That's because this frame was a drawn out comb, which means uh, the bees readily went to that first and while they were working on drawing out the wax on these two frames, they went ahead and took advantage of the drawn comb against the wall. That's what that's all about. So smoke a few times over here to kind of get the bees settled down a little bit. What the smoke actually does, uh, a lot of people think the smoke makes the bees think their house is on fire. And it uh, makes them go eat a bunch of honey and they can't sting you when their stomach is full of honey. Now nah, it's not true at all. Bees can sting you quite nicely uh, when they're full of honey. What this smoke does, uh, bees actually communicate through pheromones and the pheromones are received by the sections of their antenna. And so when you smoke them, what happens is the microscopic particles of the smoke actually blocks their ability to receive pheromone signals and so they can't communicate anymore and they get a little confused and just kind of calm down. It's almost like they were talking to each other and then they lost their signal. Kind of like what happens to our cell phone. It's like, hello? I was talking to you. I lost you. Uh, they'll call back later. So every now and again the smoke kind of dissipates and they clean their antenna with a little joint on their leg and it cleans the antenna so they can talk again. And so that's why you have to smoke them several times while you're working them. Now you're going to be surprised. See, not much on this, this side of the comb. But I bet there's a lot on this side. Papa, look at that. Wow. Nicely drawn out. Very nicely drawn out. And so you need to assess what's in here. When I'm doing an inspection. What is all this that we're looking at? So I'm going to try to show you a few things that we're looking at. This is pollen they've gathered, a few cell of different color pollen. The rest of this is not honey because it's not dried out yet. So this is pollen here and these cells that are kind of orangish yellow. The rest is nectar. Now this nectar is not honey because nectar is a little too watery. They have to dry that down before they can actually cap it over and call it honey. There are no eggs in any of, the, any of these cells, so the queen is not laying here. This is just a frame where the bees are doing their work. So we're going to set this outside the hive just to give us a little room to move the rest of our frames around. Now let's look at the next one. Another frame that has not, uh, it's a new frame that uh, the bees are working on. So they're working on drawing out the wax a little further away from the center of the brood nest area. But as you can see again, they are indeed drawing out this comb. This is a package installed a couple of weeks ago. Just getting started on stretching out some new frames. For the fun of it, let's look at this one on the edge. When I installed the package, I gave them five frames that were already drawn out. It gives them a little bit of a head start. So let's see what they're doing with this frame back here. Cleaning it up maybe. Yep. They're cleaning it up. They've, been, they've actually put in some nectar and a few cells. Again, no eggs or anything would be found on this outside wall unless the queen happened to run over here and she hasn't. Alright, so not much going on there. Pretty typical. And we've already looked at this one. Let's look at the next one. This frame is also a new frame that I gave them. It's a wood frame with plastic foundation. And let's see how well they've done drawing it out and what they've done with it. A couple of weeks later, they've really done a nice job. Look at that. Wow. Now, I hope my camera can get uh, kind of focused in on the cells because 
in the base of these cells, the queen has laid eggs. I'll do my best to try to focus in on that. Now when you see eggs like this on a frame, you sort of want to look for the queen to think maybe the queen's on this because those eggs aren't that old and she may still be around after laying those eggs. I don't see her so let's look to the other side and see what's on the other side. Now this is going to be educational. Stay with me. Look at this. You know, people look at that and say, oh my gosh, I got a queen cell. You know, what, what is this um, strange piece of comb right there? That's not a queen cell. It's just some connection comb. It's just the way the bees connected one frame to the other. Let's set that aside because there's some bees on it. Here's our frame and with the queen. Do you see her there in the middle? She's the gal with the white dot on her. And if you look closely into the cells... You'll see eggs that she's laid. You can get mesmerized by watching the queen. I want to show you a few things on here. Well, look at this right here. All of this multicolored powdery substance is pollen. So we have a frame of pollen on the outside, eggs in the middle. And then honey, this is actually honey right here that's capped over. And then this is uh, up in this area here, it's all nectar. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Let me put this back, we'll keep looking. Now the queen is on that frame facing the camera, so we don't have a risk of injuring her because we're making sure that she's um, on the piece of comb that's not going to be brushed up against another frame. Let's smoke them again because we're thinking about keeping them calm. Many of you ask me, when should I add another box? I like to add another box when about five or more frames have been started to be worked by the bees. Now in this case, this package, uh, they have one two and one we pulled out we're not going to really count that as three so they have one two three four five six six known frames that are in good shape so it's time to add another box <laughs> now this frame here is an entire frame of cap brood that means it's pupating. This is just an extraordinary, extraordinarily beautiful frame of cap brood. This cap brood means in another, no, it's probably capped over on day nine, so it, these bees will emerge on day 21. So we're gonna have a big workforce in another week to emerge and join all the sisters. This is gonna be a really good frame for us to talk about. Everybody stay with me. I want you to learn what this is. I get a lot of questions asked, what is this? What are these little bumps? Do you see those bumps? Those are drone cells, the male drones. A healthy colony will make a lot, between 200 and 2,000 male drones. At the end of my thumb are drone larvae that haven't been capped over yet. The rest is just capped over pupa of worker bee, female worker bees. Let me get a little closer. This is all just capped over smooth and level brood of worker bees. This is kind of choppy, raised up a little bit. That's drone. This is capped. It's more waxy capped honey right here. That will help you know the difference. This package is doing incredibly good. I cannot be happier with the progress of this package in just a few weeks. The queen is so impressive. How well she's laying. Oh my gosh. 
another beautiful frame of capped brood. So as you can see here, another beautiful frame of capped brood. It's so solid. Solid brood is just a brood pattern that fills almost every cell. The same here, beautiful. It looks like possibly some of these spots here. Doesn't mean spotty brood, it just means that some of the bees beat her to the frame and put nectar because her other brood pattern is just beautiful like that if all the frames were spotty and no nectar was in there we might be concerned that it was spotty brood but it's not very good brood pattern there let's look at another frame you can see how i'm using the hive tool to kind of twist it open i get a twist a little bit of a twist to the hive tool causes it to separate from the other frame. Oh, this is going to be good. I got something to show you here, so stay with me. Don't stop this video because there are queen cups, and we need to find out if you see queen cups in your hive. What does that mean? Queen cups! There's a lot to teach you about queen cups, so stay with me. Brood in the middle. We have larvae that hasn't been uh, capped over yet on the outside edges there. They're almost ready to be capped over. Beautiful. Let's talk about these queen cups. Now, what I want to teach you about queen cups. You see the two queen cups right here. At the end of my thumb, there's two queen cups. They're not called cells because they're not capped over. They're queen cups. And if you look inside of these queen cups, is that's what you want to do. You want to look inside, and one we see nectar, and the other one we see nothing. That's just there in case they need them. So nothing to be concerned about. Do not tear those off. The bees will put them back. It's just a little emergency plan if they need them. Ha! Huh, you learned something. By the way, if you've really enjoyed this video so far and you're learning things, which I hope you are, that's my whole, whole intention, my whole goal of of making these videos. If you've enjoyed and gotten value out of this video so far, please click on the like button. That will help my Google algorithms. And please subscribe because you'll be notified if you click on the bell each time I make a new video. That way you'll be a greater beekeeper. You'll avoid some horrible mistakes and you'll keep healthier bees. Oh, nice frame. This frame is interesting. Another queen cup at the top here. If you can see it, nothing in it. A lot of good bees there moving around working. And there is brood in some of these cells. Nectar around the outside edges. And same, a lot of pollen here. You see the pollen of various colors, even the very white pollen and orange and red it's so beautiful pollen is protein for the bees and the nectar and the honey is their carbohydrates they eat what we eat with the exception of of a few things like bacon bees don't eat bacon they would if they could because bacon is delicious all right some more things to teach you stay with me you diagnose this frame. What are you seeing, students? Yep, pollen, nectar, some capped honey in the corner. But what is this here? A blob, a blob, a blob, a blob. Oh no, what's that mean? It means bees need another uh, box on here to build out more frames. But that's just connective comb that bees that are making a lot of wax have just decided to put some there doesn't mean anything we're done looking at this frame this uh, this hive we're done looking at these frames in this hive I'm gonna take a quick assessment in comparison we have seen several frames of brood capped we've seen several frames of eggs and we're gonna count about how many of these frames are drawn out and then what we're gonna do 
is caring, compare it to the nook beside it. You're not being crazy wild. Try to work quietly. All right. We're going to, uh, for now, I'm going to put another deep on in the morning. Tomorrow It's going to be a nice day. But for now, we're going to tuck them away for the evening. And um, what I'm seeing here looks really good. The queen's laying pattern is beautiful. There's a lot of workforce being raised. We'll continue to feed them with the feeder just because we've just got a little bit left in the jar. So let's go ahead and let them eat the rest of the sugar water in the jar. And then I use this empty shell around the outside edges to give me a place to work my Burns feeder system. He's these feeders, I'll make a link down below if you still need some for the year. You can certainly purchase one. Whew, all right. That's the package of bees. All right, let's get to work on the five frame nook that we installed at the exact same time two weeks ago. A little over two weeks ago, I think. And what we want to look at is how they're doing. So we'll smoke the entrance. There we go, broke the propolis seal. All right, let's lift it off slowly, like that. I like to look at the lid for any small high beetles running around, and I don't see any at all, which is a good sign. Put that aside for the lid. And already, ding, 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 we have a winner. You can tell you can tell, wow, this five frame nuke is packed. I got a green, a green drone comb to kind of catch some mites. We'll talk about that. Don't go anywhere. Don't, don't move away from some other video, please, because I want to show you this green drone comb for trapping mites. Well, we don't know for sure, but it looks like a lot of bees. I'm going to start in the most convenient place over here where I'm standing uh, closer to me. So I'm going to start looking this direction first by lifting this frame out. Not using my regular hive tool because I was in a hurry and grabbed my old one. I do like the J hook better. Made a lot of videos for you on the J hook. Again, most of these were drawn comb with the exception of one or two, I think. All right, so a frame that's been drawn out and it's got some nectar in it. I have not fed these bees compared to the package. Same here. Drawn comb with a little nectar. That's a, that's a frame that's next to the wall where a lot of activity doesn't really happen too much. Pretty, pretty normal looking frame there. Now they're kind of restless. When I smoked them, they kind of revved up their engines. Some people might say they're queenless. Look at this big blob of propolis. All right, what's this frame look like? So what you want to do is look inside of it. Now that bee has got her head stuck in there which means there could be a larvae in there developing and that bee could be feeding it. So let's keep that in mind. As much as I can, and as much as I'm able to get this into focus, I don't see anything in that queen cup. But that's just a frame of nectar. We'll set it aside as well. No queen, no brood yet, which is common. Look at that propolis on my thumb. Let's smoke them again. I'm working the bees sort of late in the day, and most of them are home. The foraging has is quickly re, uh, coming to a stop, so you'll get to see most what it's like to work a bee a beehive when most of them are home instead of foraging. I like it I like to work bees more in the in the daytime between 10 and 2. Oh good. So I'm looking at this frame. I see good larvae. 
nectar. That means my queen has been laying. Uh, I gotta see eggs to verify she's still there laying well. I do see cells of larvae, pollen, nectar. Let me see if I see the queen anywhere. I really don't see a queen on this frame, so let's look on the other side. Okay, on this side of the frame, I see some cells in the middle that are ready. They're kind of clean and polished for bees, uh, by the bees to let the queen lay eggs in there, but I don't see any eggs there. But they're getting close. They've, they're preparing her a place to lay some eggs. All right, I want to tell you about this green drone comb for mite control in just a minute, so don't go anywhere. All right, you already have learned about these drone cells that are popping up here. The male drones, good brood pattern in the middle. I like it. I'm scanning for the queen. I really don't see her. Flip it over. Again, I see uh, bees, a uh, good larvae developing here. You can see the young larvae down in the cells. Again, no queen on this frame, but good brood. It's best to work between 10 o'clock in the morning and 2 o'clock in the afternoon when most of the bees are out foraging. You don't have to, but I think it just makes it better when bees are busy and they're working out in the fields gathering up nectar and uh, they're busy. Now there's a lot of bees that are home. We might find the queen on this frame. What, what do you bet? I don't see the queen. I kind of scanned that quickly, but I need to look a little more carefully. A mix of brood, pollen, nectar, and I don't, I don't see the queen. So let's keep looking and working. Work in slow motion like this. This is heavier. Must have some nectar on it. It looks like there's a battle between brood and nectar in some of these cells. Another queen cup at the bottom. I'm not too concerned because there's probably nothing in it. If you see the queen, holler. <laughs> Tell me, oh, I see her. Let's keep looking. Seeing the same things. A mixture of brood, pollen, nectar <clears throat> on each frame. That smoker is smoking right at my hat. Excuse me, bees. Oh, I'm working without gloves. I was going to use my gloves and I forgot to put them on, so whatever. <coughs> I got to move that smoker. Now I see young eggs and young larvae on this frame and cap root at the bottom. Not putting eyes on the queen, but I'm not looking terribly hard for her. Let me flip it around, look at the other side. Brood pattern's looking better on this frame here. Hey, how about we make a commitment to find the queen, no matter what? Even if we have to relook at some of these frames. Because I think we might have seen her by now. So we missed her. Unless she's on this frame. And that would be nice. It's pretty light, so it's probably got some brood on it. Ah, I don't see any brood. It's mainly nectar. What's a little bit of nectar is on there. This is nothing but nectar. And no queen. All right, good. Here's how you find the queen. Are you ready? You look and you don't find her. What do you do now? Well, we have our green drone comb to look at. This is a way to trap mites because mites prefer to multiply in drone cap cells on the pupae. So let's see if they've started drawing anything out. No, they haven't drawn it out. So what we're going to do is move it a little bit closer into the brood nest area. Get that one bee off my hand. So it was one from the wall. Let's move it to position three and see if we can start getting that drawn out. That's not uncommon for it not to be drawn out much yet. 
We said they may not have a queen because they sound kind of loud. And so now we need to look at some frames again. I'm going to look at the two frames that I set out on the by my feet first to see if the queen is there. They were the first two that I looked at. And I could have missed her. I see that queen cup. Now we're going to have to look a little bit harder. Our eyes are scanning, looking almost at every bee and their movements to see if it's possible that we see a queen. And let's look at the next one that we pulled out earlier. And then we'll look at the um, five frames that are in the hive. I thought it would be unusual to see her there on this frame because it's mostly nectar. But sometimes she walks around. Yeah, she wouldn't be on that one. So let's just set that aside. All right, here we go. You ready to go back through it and look for the queen? We don't have to. We saw eggs, so we know things are good. But it's fun to find her. So let's go on a little journey together and find the queen. So let's look at this side. Again, here's good larvae, and we stretch out to young larvae. And uh, we'll just start looking for the queen because on a frame like this, you would think the queen would be present. <sighs> there she is. I see her. You see her? All right, let me see if I can show you where the queen is. I just saw her on this frame. There she is, right there. Okay, so there we found our queen, and that's a good sign. Again, in the corner here, you can see this very young larvae, which means it was laid about a day ago or two days ago. You see that? All right, well, very good. Let's put this eye back together and let's call it all good. Hey, big shout out to Tom. Way to go. You guessed the answers to what had changed in my background. You did a great job. Now, those of you that were wondering what had happened, uh, I was looking for two things. I had changed three, and I would have accepted any of the three things. But it's more of the, of the permanent things. It wasn't so much chairs and something that got moved. It was sort of the permanent things. This got repainted, red, white, and blue bench made out of pallets. That got changed. It's kind of a cool thing. Um, the red, white, and blue flag made out of old barn wood. That got a fresh coat of paint on the red and white. And, of course, many of you got the blue lid on the storage container over there. So either of those three things uh, would have worked, and uh, Tom nailed it. He was the first one to guess it. Great job, Tom. Thanks for being a subscriber for three years. I appreciate that so much. Uh, those of you that uh, were so close, great job. Uh, you have a great eye to detail. I appreciate that. And if you didn't win the Ultimate Class, please keep watching. We're going to have more giveaways coming up. Uh, and so uh, that would be a fun thing to look forward to. So keep your eye on it. Well, here's our uh, internet that we have been using for years. And we have a little dish up here, and that dish allows us to get our internet from a tower that's way over here. Let me see if I can show you where the tower is. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's 
kind of on a grain mill somewhere maybe right in this area right here and so it's six miles away it shoots a radio signal uh, to this dish here that we pick up now this dish needs to be higher up on a tower because that distance is causing us to have ground interference there's a train about a mile away that goes across there and maybe there's communications or something it's some interference that knocks us off it's it's frustrating so anyway what do you do when you live in the country there's no cable internet there's no DSL uh, you can't really do it through your cell phone they don't give you enough data to watch movie after movie and upload big gigantic uh, YouTube videos that are gigabytes so what do you do well this is what you do thanks to Starlink you just install a Starlink system out in the country and have high-speed internet overall I've been really happy with it the speeds have been tremendous based on what I had before it's there's no comparison how much different it, it makes so I love it I love it and I love it there are times since we're beta testers uh, this was this was told to us when we signed up to be beta testers that it would be down for a minute here and there because you know they're doing updates and they're adjusting and all uh, there goes an airplane but you know uh, we put up with that not a lot of downtime but it does happen occasionally but we kind of had that with our other service so by far it's been great now what I did was I waited for their pole mount to mount it like that but it was took so long it, they never shipped it forever it, it was so back ordered or something so I just made my own pole design on my uh, peak of my roof there and I've got about I wanted to make it where I could still go up there and I could work on it if I had to I didn't want to make go crazy with it too high I may move it to one of my towers to get it a little bit higher but it's never left that position it's pointing a little bit to the north angled to the north like that and it's never changed so I've got these trees way back here but it's never even swiveled back that other way it's always been locked right there with with good internet so an update on Starlink big thumbs up we love it well it's coffee time early in the morning the birds are chirping this is the time for us to get together and we can just share some thoughts oh I'm spilling my coffee here okay and we can just kind of talk and I can share some ideas with you. Uh, sometimes they're about beekeeping. Sometimes it's just about how to enjoy life a little bit more. Um, I've had a pretty good uh, last couple of weeks. Um, I've been really busy. And I've been making beekeeping videos even though my schedule has really taken me around different places. Um, last week I was down in Orlando. I flew into Orlando and uh, spent a week down there because I needed to meet with my package bee provider and work out some details for packages of bees for 2022, believe it or not. That's how early we have to get things rolling uh, and get things uh, kind of prepared for that. So we had a great meeting for uh, a time and got everything worked out. Now there's a gnat in my coffee. Uh, I know a gnat won't hurt you if you consume it, but <laughs> there's just something about, I like bugs, but not in my coffee. Um, anyway, so I am glad to be back around the area. I made some videos even when I was in uh, Orlando and uh, didn't waste any time there. I'm trying to make about three videos a week and that's really pushing me. Um, if I wasn't such a fast, and now there's another bug in my coffee, these little gnats. Maybe I didn't get the first one out of there. And now I guess I don't mind drinking bugs because I, I think he went down deeper. <laughs> Anyway, I'm uh, making about three videos a week. I don't know. I, I hope that will be beneficial. You may get sick of seeing me. But anyway, I want to kind of do a little bit better. And my goal is to get 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Kind of think that if I make me more videos, that will help a lot in doing that. Um, so that would be fun. Um, I'm enjoying uh, editing. I'm a fast editor, and I really do love editing. I, I have a really strong creative side to me. I want to be creative and I think we all do now some of us may be more creative than other people others but um, I think all of us really take a lot of pleasure in creating stuff whether it's a drawing a painting some music 
yard work, a garden, an orchard, beekeeping. You know, we're creating a bottle of honey by assisting our bees and being healthy so they can make honey. There's a lot of things that just fall into the category of being creative. And it brings me a lot of joy to be creative. It really does. I didn't realize how much of a creative streak I have in me. Oh my gosh, I want to create new ideas. I've created several things that have really revolutionized uh, keeping bees alive in the winter with my winter bee kinds, my Burns feeding systems. I'm uh, very proud of that, that I was able to do that. Um, but it's just, you know, if you stop and think about um, all the things that we can do to be creative, it's kind of, uh, well, it's awesome. The sky's the limit. Sherry and I were talking about being creative last night. And, uh, you know, to be creative, one of the things I've learned is that you sort of have to have a lot of other things cleared off your plate. So let me explain. If you're under a lot of stress, if you don't feel good about yourself, if, you, if you're just not enough and you're always frustrated because you're not enough, you're not good enough, if you feel like you're not good enough, it's hard to be creative because you're under this kind of a depression or a, a negative attitude about who you are. And if you're that way, you feel like I'm a nobody. Nobody likes me. Nobody wants to know what I want to create. Nobody wants to have what I create, right? You see what I'm saying? The more you get into a position where you're good enough and you know you're good enough, then you get more creative. I'm good enough. If you say, I'm a good artist, then you can really create some art. If you say, I'm a really good musician, oh man, you can really create some awesome songs. And if you say, I'm a really good inventor, and you feel, you genuinely feel that in your, in your soul, then you can really begin to invent some cool stuff. Now, what do you do about not feeling like you're enough? Because I would say all of us are that way at times. And some people are more stuck in that permanently. They feel like they, you know, um, like examples would be maybe you're, you have some aging parents and they need a lot of attention from you. And they're always calling you up saying, when are you going to come see me? You're never here. Well, you were just there three days ago. And you have your own family. You're trying to raise and take care of stuff. Hello, B. <laughs> Welcome to the video. <laughs> no coffee for you, sorry. But you're feeling like, I'm, I'm doing everything I can for my aging parents, and I'm just not good enough. They're still upset. You try to do everything for your children, your young children at home, or your grown children, and then they want more. They don't feel like you're spending enough time with them or the grandchildren and you have your own life you're trying to do your things and you just feel like oh i do all these things and i'm not good enough i can't satisfy all these things maybe where you work you've done some outstanding things at work you've impressed the boss i mean you've impressed the whole team and yet some people just don't think you're good enough they don't like you as an employee they don't think you're giving enough time and you're like i don't know what to do I'm giving it all I can. Maybe you're into sports and you've you've won a few games, you've won a few trophies for the team or whatever. There's still people that keep wanting more out of you. It's insane how you can get caught up in this idea that I'm just not good enough. I'm so upset that I can't be good enough. I, I guess the best way to tie this into how to overcome that is a couple of things that I know. And I'm not a psychologist. But one of the things I know is that you have to start with what you do know and be satisfied with yourself. You have to learn to trust who you are. And when you're not good enough, you seem to be comparing yourself to either another person or the characteristics of some fictitious character. You know, if you're not, if you feel like I'm just not a good enough mother, in your mind, you're thinking of a mother that's really awesome, <laughs> or you're thinking of a mother, not really thinking of a person per se by name, but you're thinking of what the perfect mother would be. And then you're creating that 
perfect ideology of a mother and you're not living up to that you know superpower mother and you're thinking I'm not like the person that I have created in my mind that I should be and I don't know why in the world we would ever do that we should never compare ourselves to other people because if we do you know let's get real they have as many problems as we do and they're struggling with you know putting their pants on one leg at a time like we are and if we create something in our mind like this idea of a perfect person that we're not living up to oh my <laughs> there's no validity in that at all so we have to learn to say this is who i am right now and yeah i may not be good enough and well we, i may say i may not be who i'm going to be eventually after i get better but for now i am good enough with where i'm at with what i know with what i'm doing right now and let's face it sometimes you have a lot to deal with and you can only be as good as that situation allows you to be good at. But you can be best in that limited situation. So one thing I know is beekeeping. And so I know that when I first started beekeeping, uh, I felt I was good enough with what I knew, which is very little. And I made mistakes. I lost hives. I forgot to do stuff that I should have done, right? You know? Um, I left a frame out and they made weird comb and the gap. I've done all, I've done all the dumb mistakes. <laughs> I may be a certified master beekeeper, but I could also probably be more certified in making mistakes in beekeeping. But at the time, I was good enough. Now, I wasn't good enough compared to somebody that had a lot more experience than I did. Years of experience because they made the mistakes and already have recovered. <laughs> Oh, I hope this is good for you. I feel like I'm touching somebody's soul with this information because I'm getting excited about myself uh, just sharing this good stuff with you about being good enough. You are a good enough mother. Don't let anybody tell you. Don't think that you're not. Good grief. I don't care if somebody says you should have done more. You didn't and you couldn't have. You did what you did with what you had to work with, with who you were at the moment. That's it. That was good enough. Forget it. At work, you're good enough. You're good enough. If they don't, if they want you to do more, if they want you to do things beyond your capabilities right now, it doesn't matter. That doesn't make you not good enough. You're good enough to do with what you're doing right now. You may improve. You may get better. And you will be better. But right now, you're as best as you can be. And be proud of that. And do not ever compare yourself to anybody else. And like if you look at me and say, oh my gosh, I don't know how he works hives like that today. He didn't have any gloves on. His smoker kept going. How does he keep his smoker going? He's killing me. My smoker never works. My smoker goes out. While I was filming it, it did go out. I didn't have enough smoker fuel. But I had just mowed the yard three or four days ago, and there was a big pile of dried grass. So I just ran over there, stopped the camera, and I stuck a bunch of grass, dried grass in my smoker, and I kept going. So you are good enough because my smoker goes out too. <laughs> I feel like that. I, I feel like you're understanding what I'm saying. Well, a lot of times we're stuck in some damage to our, the wiring in our mind gets damaged. You, you just have to rewire your thinking. And I can't really walk you through that. Other than I can tell you, you can do it. You can change the way you're thinking. You can change the way you're acting and perceiving things, uh, interpreting things. You can change that over time. It takes a long time. If you have a buddy, a girlfriend, or a coach, or somebody, a mentor that can help you start feeling like, hey, stop thinking that way. You're good enough. That helps a lot. But just, just know that sometimes we have heard that we're not good enough by some very imp impressionable people. They've really impressed us because there might be a parent, they might be somebody that we really respect and they had, they didn't mean to, but they really put us down and told us or led us to believe we weren't good enough. And that kind of burned into our memory and now we're struggling with that. And we're shoving that onto other things in life and saying we're not good at that. But you just have to take baby steps. Always take little baby steps. You just say, you know what? Every day of the week, I feel like I'm not good enough. Well, take a baby step. And here's how you do it. You just pick a day 
like Monday or Tuesday, Saturday, whatever, and you build guards around your mind, and all day long you're going to say, I'm going to repeat to myself, and I'm not going to give in to negative feelings all day long. I'm going to say, I'm good enough. All right, if, if you need somebody to help you out, <laughs> do this. David told me I was good enough. I really think he's honest. I think he's sincere. And I listened to him, and he made sense in what he said, and I am good enough. I'm not the best, but I'm good enough for who I am right now. So just pick one day, spend that day patting yourself on the back and feeling good enough. And look in the mirror and say, you know what? I am good enough. I can be better, but I'm good enough. All right, that's it for coffee time. Thanks for joining me. I hope this has uh, been encouraging uh, to you today and because it's really encouraged me. So I have really enjoyed it. As always, I want to thank you for being a part of my uh, channel here. It means a lot. I'm, I'm working hard to make more videos that will help you. So I'd like to encourage you to leave comments below on what you want me to make future videos on. I feel like if I make videos that help you, that it just it's a win-win situation. You'll watch more, and I like that, and I like helping you. So if you'll tell me in the comments, give me ideas about what kind of videos you want me to make, I'll do my best to make them. All right, very good. I'll see you next time.